The Coca-Cola 600 on Fox is sponsored by FedEx. We understand you need reliable shipping options. FedEx, buy new extra crispy strips from KFC. Big strips, double breaded for a big crunchy taste. So crunchy, so good. And by the Home Depot, more saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Today, most always you'll find a crew chief up on top of the pit box. But back in my time, you'd find me on pit road. And this is my favorite position, Jackman. And I was taught how to do this by the Hall of Famer, Junior Johnson, quite an innovator. Let me show you the trick he taught me. <sighs> Definitely faster, but NASCAR didn't like it. Thanks, Jeff. Down in the nationwide insurance pit zone. Yeah, NASCAR passed a rule against slinging that jack around the front of the car. The free pass, 77 Sam Hornish, and the wave arounds were Bobby Labonte, and also Travis Quapel elected the wave around. So we go to the restart with Jimmy Johnson and Ryan Newman, the front row. We had six cars went with just two right side tires, including the front row of Jimmy Johnson, the 48, Ryan Newman, 39. Steve Burns told me they wanted to get that 48 car of Johnson clean air. Green flag. To begin lap 96. This will be interesting because the two has been so strong. Uh, let's see if the 48's got anything for him once he gets up there. Here comes Kyle, three wide, right up the middle. And you notice his teammate just sort of faded to the left there. Those Kurt Busch turns that thing right to the yeah. bottom of the racetrack, side by side off turn four. I want to say, Larry, this is going to be an interesting experiment here. I just don't know if anybody's got anything for the two car right now. Whoa, that doesn't look good. Straight up the middle, Kyle Busch, Rudiman on the bottom, double zero, Biffle up top. Man. And Kurt Busch was credited with leading that last lap. This one will go to Jimmy Johnson. This will be the 17th consecutive race. At Charlotte Motor Speedway, that Jimmy Very Johnson. Nice work, my man. No leader to 48. <laughs> I believe that. I believe that 18 car is coming though. It I is. believe they got him fixed up. 17 straight race here that Jimmy Johnson has led, but Kyle Busch underneath Ryan. Whoa, Ooh, ooh little whoa. slide there as he got the left sides in the paint. Well, that's that tough spot right there. When you're down the bottom, got a little wheel cranked in it. They want to get pushy loose, just like you saw him do. You lane. At your door, corner, still there, corner. Well, that's Clear. where you have to be so careful right there because you're coming at the spotter, so you're a little bit on your own right there, late exit of turn four. But, Larry, he doesn't hesitate. You know, Kyle Busch never hesitates. He believes in his spotter, Jeff Dickerson, and when he says you're pretty close to being clear, that's clear enough for him. Now, we see Denny Hamlin in this 11 car go by Greg Biffle in the 16. That was a battle for seventh. We got the report that Denny Hamlin spun his tires on that restart. As the evening goes on, we'll see more and more of that. We'll probably have some big mess up here on the front straightaway when we have a restart. David Rudiman, the double zero last year's winner. Underneath Ryan Newman with Clint Boyer in tow. This is for fourth place. You know, this is a, getting Jimmy Johnson out front is the way uh, last week in the All Star race. Uh, it's really helped him uh, get clean air on his car. We're looking at these guys here. That they yep. need clean air on their car. This could be a log jam here, Daryl, because it looks as if Brad Keselowski and that number 12 Dodge is kind of holding up Martin Truex, Greg Biffle, and Jeff Gordon. But what a job by that race team right there. Remember, they started back in the 43rd position. That's a backup car for Keselowski in the 12 car. And Jay Guy, his crew keys, decided to go with just two right side tires that last caution. And I tell you another guy, that 24 car, Larry, as the sun goes down and the track starts cooling down, he looks like he's coming alive, Dick. And that is exactly what Jeff Gordon predicted was going to happen on the radio about 50 laps ago, Daryl. The car was handling poorly. He was all the way back in the 25th position. But he and crew chief Steve LaCarte went back and forth and assured each other everything would be well when the sun went down. I think that's that patience you were talking about, Daryl. Yeah, I never heard any radio, uh, there any complaints out of Jeff's radio other than the car was a little tight. Well, it's hard to be patient when you see Tony Stewart in the 14 rocket passed like you're tied to a stump. And here comes McMurray also on the outside. 
working for position. In the first long green flag run of this race, Jeff Gordon went from 15th back to 23rd. Now he's holding station at 13th position. Well, I don't think his car is there yet, but it's a lot better than it was. Yes. And I tell you, somebody else that's following him up through there, our points leader, Kevin Harvick, in that 29 car, Kevin started in the 23rd position. He's sitting there running in the 15th, now battling Gordon for that 14th spot. This has not been one of Kevin Harvick's better racetracks. No, in fact, it's he says it's his worst racetrack. But that race car has been so steady this year. That's why he's our point leader. And uh, he and Gil Martin, they'll work on that, baby. They'll get him up here before the night's over with. And it'll be, what do you say about him, Mike, every week? Mr. Where did he come from? He likes that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's what he said in pre-race. Matt? And hugging that white line as Kevin Harvick does at so many different racetracks. He's a bottom dweller. And you're right, Mike. Statistically, it's his worst racetrack. Only one top five finish. Second back in 2001 in this event. Harvick, no changes on that last stop. A very solid performance. The only change they made with the track bar just back on lap 50 because the car was too tight then. Good battle back here, but second place is heating up as well. Kyle Busch has all but caught his older brother. May have a try at him this lap. And Krista, they're only half a second behind Jimmy Johnson. Well, Mike, we saw this battle between the Bush brothers last Saturday night in the All-Star event. You mentioned this is a different car for Kurt Busch and his team than they had in that race, but they have the exact same setup. Kurt said he was excited about how it felt from the hot daytime to the cool nighttime. And Steve Addington said their biggest struggle would be surviving and getting through the daytime. They feel like they are best set up when the sun goes down. Well, they're there then, Krista. And the other thing you got to remember, folks, last Friday night, this young man won the uh, truck race uh, before the All-Star race, had a shot at winning the All-Star race. He came back yesterday and won the nationwide race. So he should win tonight. I call that a clean sweep. Yes, it would be. Here is Paul Menard and Mark Martin moving up on Brad Keselowski. That will move uh, Menard up to 16. And Martin to 17th. A.J. Allmendinger looking in in the 43. Made a lot of changes to that car on the last pit stop, and they needed to. He was way loose on the prior run. Yeah, A.J. Allmendinger in the 43 had worked his way up into the top 15 before we got into some of those pit stops. Now, Dale Earnhardt Jr. here in the 88 car. He's in the 21st position. Krista, he started 24th, and this is about where he's been the whole race. Yeah, Larry, they've really just been trying to keep up with the adjustments. Dale Jr. started the race. Of course, the car was pretty good, but real loose off, especially turn two. So when they came in and made some adjustments, then they got tight in the center. What he is, has he said most recently? Chattering the tires in the center of turns one and two. I, that nine cars are one I can't believe. Larry, I don't know what they did there. Do you know Burns? Well, Daryl, I can tell you what Casey Kane said. They did take four tires on the last stop. He's describing his front tires as like a dysfunctional family. He said the left front isn't working and the right front doesn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny right there. <laughs> We put the fun in dysfunctional, right? <laughs> well, I tell you what, these two brothers, this battle will not go away. And what's amazing, they are battling like this, and Jimmy Johnson in the 48-hour leader is not really pulling away from him. You can see him, the distance right there. Matt on the third place car. And Dave Rogers, Mike, methodically keeping this race car ahead of this changing racetrack. The last stop is a slight track bar adjustment. Kyle said that he wanted a Ziploc bag of ice on the next stop. Very hot inside that cockpit. 600 miles here tonight in Charlotte. You know, Mike, as I see these two brothers battle like this, I can't help but think a few years ago in the All-Star race in May where they got together and wrecked each other. They quit speaking to each other. They got to Thanksgiving, and their grandmother said, listen, you two, you are not messing my Thanksgiving up. You two will work this out. Took grandmother to get them straightened out. I don't know, Larry. Better get her on the phone, Larry. <laughs> Larry, it's five months to Thanksgiving. And I know, but I think we may, we may have to have another meeting. This is getting pretty heated. And what happens here is Kyle will get aggravated with Kurt because Kyle thinks that I've caught you, I'm under you, let me go, quit racing me. And uh, that's where the uh, aggravation sets in. Well, how'd you ever feel when your brother passed you? Uh, you know, 
was times when I was okay with it, but not very often. Right. <laughs> Depending on what part of the race. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jimmy Johnson cruising with a one second advantage, Steve. Funny conversation between Jimmy Johnson and Chad Canals. Jimmy said this car is sketchy. It was tight and then it got loose and then it's starting to get looser. And Chad Canals said, good, that's good. Jimmy said, if you say so. Now that's what I was saying about early in the race. You gotta be, you gotta know that my car isn't very good, but it's a heck of a lot better than everybody else's. And oh, by the way, sketchy, that's a word my girls use all the time, and I never have figured out what it meant. 